see that we're human beings. May we all see that we've made mistakes. But that's what your grace and your mercy is all about. You've come to set us free. And we thank you for the power of forgiveness. We have learned that forgiveness brings health. And I thank you, Lord, that today as we talk, that we're just not trying to expose anybody. We just want people to see their condition and make sure that all is well with their souls. And that's what a pastor and teacher is trying to do. So, Father, as I preach, it's not about condemnation. It's about God's grace is sufficient to meet every need that we may have. And, Lord, I thank you right now. The Holy Ghost is moving. Even right now, I sense his presence and his power. And I thank you, Father. Lord, bring healing to your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're up there and ready to go. I want to read this, and it's about Israel, and it says, It was a great tragedy when the northern tribes of Israel separated from the southern tribes, and a war broke out between brothers result, resulted. The same strategy is being used by our enemy today. Separate and destroy. Bitterness is the greatest tool at his disposal. And he has left a path of destruction in the church, all because Christian brothers left the principle of love and forgiveness. Has anybody in here ever been hurt by anybody? Would you raise your hand? Anybody in here that's never been hurt? I want to check your pulse. <laughs> Get over it. We've all been hurt. But how we handle those hurts are so important. And that's why God has given us the ability to forgive. Sometimes we lock people in that's hurt us years ago. Might be our parents, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a friend or somebody. But they've changed. God saved them. God's done a work in them. But in our brain, it's still locked in our brain what they did 30 years ago that hurt us. And we hold those grudges and not realizing that the hurts that we hold within our own heart is what is causing many people to be sick, emotionally depressed, and the enemy is afflicting them. Because they can't turn that hurt loose and can't forgive the person that has hurt them. Now, I want to share two things with you that, I, that might help you. And I, I want everybody to look at me. I'm here to help you. Yes. Not to accuse you. I'm here to, to be an instrument in God's hands to set you free. To help people to love one another. Look at our society today, and I don't like to talk about the negatives, but sometimes we have to address the cause if we're going to get all healed up. I can say today, after 84 years of marriages, yeah, 80, <laughs> let's see, I'm 63 and I've been married 84 years old. How do you explain that to me? <laughs> Let me start over. <clears throat> We've been married 60, thank you, <laughs> 63 years, and I'm 84, and she's 83. And we had to learn right off when we first got married to forgive one another. And if you haven't learned to do that, then, then you're going to, these hurts are going to just mount up, stack up, just one after another, one after another one after another, and you're going to have bad attitudes towards people. You're going to act and react out of those hurts. Yeah. You can be a fine person, but you haven't learned to forgive. How many of you know when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Lord, send the power down here and show them what a little power looks like and burn them to a crisp. <laughs> 
Fried chicken, burn it good. You see, you either got it or you ain't. And if you ain't got it, I'm here to try to help you to get it. Start off blessing people. Start off forgiving people. Let me tell you something. Start off by forgiving yourself. Everybody say, Lord, I forgive myself. Now listen to this. The principle is simple. It's not complicated. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you ain't going to love your neighbor. How many see that? that? That's simple. That is not complicated. And every day, every day, I don't care. Somebody, you're driving down the road, you're singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And he comes along, cuts right in front of me. Oh, you do that again, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell my wife on you. <laughs> How many's been there? Come on, come on. Oh, look out now. Yeah. See, now you got it all wrong. You say, Lord, I bless that person. I bless that person. Start blessing them. Because, see, if you bless them, you get a blessing. You get what you sow. Anybody out there? You get what you sow. Now, you may have to change some of your altitudes. And your attitudes, you've got to learn to forgive and forgive from the heart. Did you know what Jesus called the, the, the man that wouldn't forgive? A wicked servant. So if you have unforgiveness in your heart, if, and if we have not forgiven others their trespasses as he has forgiven us, we're considered a wicked servant. How many know the scripture in Matthew? Yeah. Don't have time to go into that. So, what's new? You've been hurt, and you'll probably get hurt tomorrow or the next day if you don't know how to put your shield of faith on. And block those hurts out and say, I will not be offended. I will not be hurt anymore. I refuse to be hurt and offended. I will love that brother or sister. I don't care what they do. Why, in fact, Jesus said, love your enemies. <laughs> because you see, if you don't forgive, whew, you're giving place to the devil. You know, this guy had a lot of flies around the house. And... Um, He's fighting flies every day, all the time, 24-7. Even at nighttime when he was sleeping, they'd land on his nose. And he'd wipe them off, they'd land on his wife's nose. And they'd eat, you know, well, he got in a lot of trouble like that. But anyway, and this guy comes by one day, and, and he'd go, man, you got a lot of flies in here. Yeah, how, how do you get rid of them? Oh, it's simple. I notice you have a garbage can over there. Just take the garbage can and all that garbage out of the house. Just take all the garbage out of your house. Out. And the flies won't bother you, you no more. The, the demons will not harass you and, and kick you around every day 24-7. So my wife and me, when we first got married, we had to learn to forgive one another. And we found out it was an everyday deal. Did you? Did, did you? <laughs> I remember Susan would be by the bed and she said, and Lord, I forgive Bobby. And I'm thinking, what did I do this time? Oh. <laughs> It's good that you can laugh because it shows me you're, getting, you're, you're, you're somewhat free. Because if you can't laugh what I'm preaching on this morning, you just bound up. I mean, bad. We need to pray for you right now. <clears throat> we had to forgive. And as I was growing in all of this and maturing in the Lord, I mean, the Lord began to show me people in the past that I had to forgive. And... Uh, when I was about 16 years old, uh, 
I lost two teeth. You want me to show them to you? <laughs> I, I know a little joke about teeth. This couple, they were up in years, and they um, shared everything. Everything they shared, everything. And they're sitting in the Hardee's, got one hamburger, and they cut it in half, and she took half of it, and, and he took the other half, and he ate his half, and the, and the man was watching. She didn't, wasn't eating in her half of her hamburger. And the guy was over there eating his half, and he finally ate it. So anyway, the, the man came over and said, well, how come you're not eating uh, your hamburger? And she said, well, we share everything, you see, and I'm waiting on the teeth. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I think we better give the invitation right now while I'm ahead a little bit. There's no way in this world that you can just, you know, without being hurt sometimes. I'm sure, and I don't mean to hurt anybody. I know that I probably hurt some of you, and I apologize, and, and I don't mean to hurt anybody, but I aim to tell the truth because only the truth is going to set you free. You might not know, but I'm the best friend you got in here besides Jesus. That's right. My wife will work, we'll walk right down the road with you in every difficulty, in every situation. And some of you can say amen to that because we've, we've proven it. So I'm here to help. Now, here's the way this thing works. If you got it up on the board yet, uh, Willie? Hurts when you get hurt if you don't know how to handle it and forgive the person that has hurt you, it leads to resentment. How many in here can tell if you've been hurt by somebody? Let me see your hands. Okay. How many here can tell that uh, being that you haven't for, forgiven, or, uh, forgiven them? You have resentment now. How many can tell if you have resentment? How many of you can tell you're still alive? <laughs> Welcome to the group. How many in here has ever had any resentment? Raise your hands. Don't lie to your daddy. Remember, the Lord knows everything, and I know every other thing. Hurts lead to resentment. Now, here's the thing about it. Even doctors today, and I had a, a, a piece of paper out on all of this, that they're finding out that people that do not forgive, that they don't get healed quickly. They stay sick physically and mentally. That's how important it is. And when you read the Bible, you'll see all through the Bible, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness forgiveness and we have to learn to forgive others and we have to learn to forgive ourselves and sometimes that's the hardest thing in the world to forgive yourself but you got to do it because if you hold that resentment it will set off all types of uh, of chemicals in your body and bring different diseases such as cancer in your body now, many other things will do that. Now, this is what the doctors are saying. We've known it for years in the church. But it, it'll create a negative attitude towards your people. Susan and me have dealt with people that literally hated their father, hated their mother, hated their brothers, hated people in the church. And we had to try to get them and teach them how to get out of that and get set free. See, the Bible says that we've been, we've been set free. And the Bible says, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. So when we come to Christ, we get set free from all the past sins and everything. But then we don't know how to walk in the spirit. And what happens is we accumulate this resentment and, and we just take in the hurts in our bodies, which causes us to, uh, 
get sickly. Uh, if you read the Bible, you'll find out be, because they did not um, uh, receive the Lord, the uh, communion in, in a right way, in an unworthy way. Many of them were what? Sick and prematurely died. So we have to understand that we are in a spiritual battle. We have an enemy that wants to separate our families, separate the church, and we see that with all the denominations, we see that in the families today, and, uh, and we don't judge, but we pray. We pray. We try to help people to learn how to walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that's a process of learning. Now, you, if you're saved, you're saved. We're not talking about that. But we're talking about, and people don't realize, that God wants us to stand fast in that liberty. And when we don't, we can get in bondage to a lot of different things. I ain't talking about heaven and hell here. You're saved. You can't get no more saved. But you know yourself, it's just like you can get in financial uh, bonds. Anybody ever been in a financial bond in here? Yeah, 100%. I knew it, yeah. Well, have we learned not to get entangled again in that? Huh? We're learning that. <laughs> That's a hard one to learn because they make everything so easy to get. And we want everything they got. So we have to learn to live within our means and not get into financial bondage. But we're talking about hurts. We get hurt. Well, you hurt me. Yeah, that was 30 years ago. And they still carrying the hurt, not knowing that it is tearing them apart on the inside and will cause sickness and many, many bad manifestations within their heart. So what happens? Uh, you get hurt and you don't forgive and, you, and it goes into resentment. Let's go to the next one. See what happens. Hurts to resentments and resentment to bitterness. The Bible says in Hebrews, see to it that no man falls short and allow bitterness to spring up. Notice that spring up and defile many. If you're around a person that is bitter, love them, pray for them. Don't spend too much time around them if you can get away from them because that bitterness can get on you. Defiling many. Well, my husband's bitter and I can't get away. I know you're trapped. I'm sorry. I can't do nothing but pray for you. <laughs> but, but you're going to have to learn to pray for him. I'm not going to ask anybody, but Susan and me pray for one another. You know, we talk about the hot seat up here. We practice the hot seat. Some of you think that my age has wore my uh, hair off. Susan, with that oil, <laughs> I'm somebody that needs a lot of prayer. You, you don't know the big demons that come after pastors. You don't have any idea. You, 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 yeah, you want God to promote you in authority? You better be, thank God, where you is. But I thank God the anointing comes on my wife, and most of you saw a while ago how both of the anointing came on both of us. It's heavy, and she puts your hand on you. The demons go and the hair goes. <laughs> but I'd rather be bald than have demons. <laughs> I'm just a ble blessed, bald-headed man. <laughs> but look what it is. Hurts to resentment. Now, you know if you got resentment, you know if you got hurt. It comes out in your speech. It comes out in your personality. It comes out in, in many ways in your life. Now, listen to this. Bitterness is poison to the soul. A lot of people live out of their souls, not realizing we have to live out of the spirit. Many times hurt from childhood parents' relationships. Now, it's good. The Bible says examine yourself. There's times we need to examine ourselves. And I wish we had the time to bring it above every scripture, but that's in Corinthians. 
Examine yourself. What's bothering you today? Now think about it. Well, I'm hungry right now. I ain't talking about that. How many know when you get hungry? Okay. How many know when your back itches? How many know when, when, uh, when, you're, when you're sweating? How many of you know when you're thirsty? You know all of those different manifestations of the flesh. We can also know the manifestation of the spirit. Okay? Now, listen. How was it in your childhood? Did you feel like you were the least in your family? Well, my oldest sister thought she was it on a stick. Did you feel like you were the least in your family's house? Seemed like I remember somebody in the scriptures that felt that he was the least in his father's house. But you know, God is so gracious that he's waiting to heal us if we'll give it up. Let it go. Everybody say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Uh, who's got ten dollars in their wallet? Let's say you got ten dollars. I'll give a little example here. Okay, just take the ten. That's all. Just ten. Thank you. I appreciate you letting it go. Let it go. Let it go. What did Jesus say on the cross? Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they're going to do. People don't know what they're doing a lot of them. And sometimes you can offend people and you don't even realize it, you know? And they're around, they're going around they're pouting all day. Their lip coming, their bottom lip goes down to their navel. They're not careful. They could step on it. How many love me? Not many. <laughs> not many now. But I'm here to help you. I remember one time when I was a young boy. I was uh, 11 and a half years old. And I climbed up on this garage. And this uh, young, uh, young boy. We were playing cops and robbers. You remember those days? And uh, he's sneaking around the garage. I'm up there looking at him. He's looking, peeping around here, and I go, bang, 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 you're, you're dead. He looked at me, bang, 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 you're dead. I said, no, you're dead, no, you're dead. He got mad at me, wouldn't speak to me for three days, and his mother, his mother made him to come out of the house, and she, you go out there, and you play with, with, with Brother Bob right now. Well, if you don't, I'll put a hurt on you. So he comes out. I said, man, forget about it. I'm dead. You're dead. Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> a lot of this stuff don't make no difference. Say, it don't make no difference. If you think you're it on the stick, go ahead. I'll help you out. I just be, be it on the stick. Because I know God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So remember, you don't have to be number one. Because, see, in God's eyes, you are number one. See, that's where, that's where our new identification, which our bro uh, brother's son preached the other couple Sundays ago. Was it last Sunday or Sunday before last? I can't remember. Our new identification. We are more than conquerors through Christ. I could do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. Knowing who you are in God. And I'm going to tell you something. That's part of your, the shield. Because when you know who you are in God. Whatever words come your way. It just hits your shield and bounce off. Because I ain't accepting that. Because I know who I am. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him until that day. I am a son of God. 
John was overwhelmed, but he said, Oh, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God? And, we, and by the way, how many of you know we, we are up in heaven and we're seated with Christ in heavenly places? See, so, so you, you know who you are and, and, and whenever, whatever they say. I've had people tell me, now, I don't tell nobody, but they've told me in church. To go to hell. And I said, no way, I'm going to heaven. Because Jesus Christ died for me. And I ain't going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Because see, I know who I am. I know what the Lord has done for me. But see, you got to learn that and get that in the fiber of your being. And let people do what they want to do. You're not responsible for them. You're responsible for your own actions. All right, let me show you something. Let's see who I can pick on. Charles. Since you're on the front row, son. Aren't you glad you came up? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> Y'all stay on the back row. Go ahead. <laughs> you see, if he hurts me, and I forgive him, the forgiveness is not so much for him, it's for me. Hello? You release your own self from that hurt and that disappointment when you forgive your brother what he did. And he might not even have known he's done it. You know, his mama, every time he would say something bad about his sister, his mama might have said, good boy, son. He, he thinks he's doing something great. Tell her to, to go or whatever. So forgiveness is not so much for the other person. It is for you to keep your own self clear from all resentment and bitterness. Because it says, see to it that no one has a root of bitterness defiling many. And it goes over into the children. Grandchildren, right on down the line. Thank you, son. I'll forget about you owing me that ten. You don't really, it's really, yeah, you keep it, that's okay. <laughs> you know, the Bible says give. And it shall be given unto thee. I've been trying to get rid of this counterfeit 20 for a long time. <laughs> Give, and it'll be given unto you. Press down, shaking over, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Learn to bless. Put uh, Ephesians, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ephesians chapter, no, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. Verse 9. Now, while he's putting that on the board, by the way, don't stop there at bitterness. We'll get back to that other in just a little bit because it goes a little deeper and a little rougher. Never return evil for evil. Why? Why? Somebody tell me, Read what you sow. It'll come back to you. See, we got to understand that's why God says bless them. They say all manner of things against you. Don't get hurt by it. Don't be resentful by it. Now I'm going to say something here. The closer the person is to you will be the degree of hurt that you will feel. I'll say that again. The closer you are to an individual, and that individual hurts you, it will be a deeper hurt. How many understand what I'm saying? 
Now, some of you ne may need to forgive your children today. This is, this is, called, this is called forgiveness day. Because you see, if you want to be forgiven, what do you got to do? Forgive. Very simple. And learn to live the life of forgiveness. Because people are going to disappoint you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Susan. I'm sorry, baby. Thank you, baby. And she just released herself. Spencer, thank you. Forgive me. Thank you. <laughs> Poured a little bit out, you never know, you know. <laughs> but l let me say something. See, what happens is you train your spirit. You can train your spirit to be a forgiving spirit. And even before you hurt me, I forgive you because my spirit has been programmed to forgive everybody that sticks their tongue out at me. Whatever they say, it's okay, brother. I love you anyway. Come on over and let's have a little pizza. Frank's buying. Come on, let's all go over. <laughs> So wake up to reality. There's no need to hold grudges. You're only destroying your own self. And you're passing it on to somebody else, probably in your family, who you love very deeply. So train your spirit being to forgive and bless. Look what it says. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Boy, sometimes, I mean, I'd, how many's ever felt like giving them the big one? <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's so many people up there on the moon that I have sent, years ago I sent up there. <laughs> but, but when I learned this, I learned this, that, that this is for me to forgive you. You see, never, never. Return evil for evil. You say, oh, I have this bad habit of resenting every time somebody looks at me wrong. Oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? God is able to change you from the inside out. You can be the most loving person you've ever seen. The kids will say, what happened to mama? Man, she's got a smile on her face. And she, she looked at daddy the other day and blinked her eyes and winked at him one time. And my goodness, she must have, have gotten an overhaul or something. <laughs> yeah, God's been at work with mama. That's what it is. Learn to forgive. 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 Now, look. We're going to finish reading that. I'm going to let you go early today. 3.30. Insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness, and protection. Now, when's the last time you've done that to somebody that just teed you off but good? Can't even remember. But you probably remember what you said. May they ever do that again, I'm going to give them a, a foot. Happiness and protection and truly pitying and loving them. I remember we would correct some of our children. We had three daughters and, and they'd sort of go around pouting and we wouldn't allow that. And we'd just come up like, come on, daddy loves you. Come on, and just love, you know, just love up on them till they, they start wanting to just sitting on your lap and they start loving up on you. When you come in this place, the first thing I'm going to do, if I can get to you, if you don't run around the other way. Do you know how, you know one reason how you can tell you got resentment to someone? When they come in that door, you go out that door. Some of you didn't get that, did you? If they're on that side of the church, you're on this side. I didn't get no amens on that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it like it is, Bob. I believe it will. I believe it will. will. <laughs> That's just the way it works with all of us. 
So we have to learn to forgive and bless, 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 forgive and forgive and Mighty weak over here. <laughs> Forgive and bless. See, our old human nature, the way it is, when you say something I don't like, we have a tendency that, who does he think he is? My grandfather had a farm. He had a mule, too. Learn to release people and learn to release yourself and live in happiness. Get your heart right with God and enjoy every day of your life. God has blessed some of us so abundantly. When's the last time you even smiled at anybody? My goodness, God has blessed us. We go home. To, what do you got in your refrigerator? Uh, milk. <laughs> we won't go there. Anyway, what, what you got in your refrigerator? Frozen turkey. What do you say? Frozen turkey. Turkey? Yeah. We'll go to your house. Are we all ready? We're going to hear that. <laughs> Look at the person. I love you. Go ahead. Some, some, some of you wives hadn't said that to your husband in so long, you forgot even how to pronounce it. Forgive. Bless. Forgive. Bless. All right, listen. Time's going by quick. And it goes on and says, uh, Pit and love you then, for know that to this you have been called. Called for what? To bless. Now, we got a young couple that's been married here for just, I'm going to embarrass them now. <laughs> In love, of course. They just got married about, uh, how long has it been? Uh, been so long you forgot? That's right. How long have you been married? Eight months. Y'all having any problems? Don't you lie to your daddy. <laughs> Regardless of what problems you have, you got to forgive. Forgive. We've been called to bless that you, that you may receive an inheritance of a blessing from God. That you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to yourself and to others. So when you forgive them, you bring blessings to yourself, welfare to yourself, protection to yourself, and also to them. It's such a simple principle, but it's a powerful principle that will keep you in your liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Hurts lead to what? Resentment. Resentment leads to what? Bitterness leads to what? And hatred to what? Rebellion. That's just the way it works. So headed off at the pass, you know, I remember the Lone Ranger. How many remembers the Lone Ranger? We, back in my days, you didn't have TV. Uh, you had a radio if you were blessed. I bought our first radio when I was 14 years old, and I paid $14 for it. And I would uh, listen to the Lone Ranger and uh, Mr. and Mrs. North and uh, uh, the Shadow. How many remembers those? And I remember the Lone Ranger, and, and uh, the Lone Ranger would say to Tonto, head him off at the pass. And you've got to head some of these things off at the pass. See, the reason some people are mean to you, and I want you to listen to me, because they've been hurt. And they are reacting out of their hurts. Towards you. See, you got to understand that if you're going to understand people. The Bible says, get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding. 
Now, there's times, and I can remember in my own life, and I've, and I've repented of it, and, and, I've, and I've asked uh, Susan to, to forgive me, because there's no other man in here like this, but I have snapped at my wife. You a preacher? Yeah. And I sweat, too, and I'm getting hot in this coat. <laughs> I'm just like you. I came from the old Adam, same stump. And, you, and if something's bothering you, and your wife keeps asking for an answer, and finally, you know, you've done told her three times, right, Charles? <clears throat> and then she asks you again, when I find out myself, I'll tell you. Ooh. Please forgive me, darling. I, I didn't mean that, darling. I forgive you, Bob. It's oh, okay. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Don't you. need fixing. You know. We'll live with the way it is. Good news for me. And then I feel guilty, you know. Oh, boy. <laughs> See, I, I, when you do that, I need forgiveness. Look at this, somebody and say, you need forgiveness. Charles, you need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. It's okay. You need forgiveness. Forgive. Forgive and set yourself free. Amen. Simple is not complicated. Don't spread it all over the world. Right? Amen. Just forgive. It's so simple, but we want to make people suffer like we feel like we're suffering. And, and, and I'm not going to let them off the hook. Yeah, no way. I'm going to keep that, that thing set and watch them just jump and holler. And look at, woo, look at it. Just, then let it go back, run back out, bring him back. Come on, church, love me now. Come on, see that. One of our daughters came and said, Daddy, the teacher's, the teacher's treating me bad. I said, how is she treating you bad? Well, well she, she, she won't do what I want her to do. Well, I said, honey, she's not there to, 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 to do what you want her to do. You're there to do what she wants you to do. And the bell went off. Bing! Oh. I said, now you go back and you pray for that teacher. Because she's there. I'm paying money out of my pocket for, for, her, for her salary to teach you A, B, C, and what comes next, I forgot. Anyway, <laughs> you see, keep yourself clear. Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. All right, look what it has. Here's the thing. Hurt to resentment, you don't deal with it. Resentment to bitterness and bitterness to hatred and hatred to rebellion. And now you are operating full speed in the devil's principle, rebellion. And now you probably need deliverance. I've delivered a few folks from some of those things up there. So it's so easy to bless and to forgive. Listen, now. And I got just a little bit more time. Bitterness pollutes one's whole system. Bitterness. It comes out in one's speech. It's seen in one's actions. These are the manifestations of it. Reveals in one reveals in one attitude. I'll guarantee you there's people right in this place that they, they change their attitude about a few things. Now, Brother Bob, you're meddling. Yeah, I think I will. Believe I will meddle a little bit. Ask the question, what do you need to change your attitude about some people? I've seen people when, when our president, last president we had, man, they ought to ship him to China. No, you, that ain't the way you talk about your president. You pray for your president. You pray for those in authority. Don't go that way, Bob. I don't think I will today because I don't have time. But you pray for those in authority. Amen. 
Then you have fears of other hurts that you get hurt again. Now, what happens is if, um, if Charles hurts me and I don't know how to deal with it. Can you come over here for me if you don't mind? And, and he hurts me, see. And, and I don't forgive you. Ooh, can you hurt me. He hurt me. Now, he's over here, so I'm going to get over here. Get as far away from him as I can. Anybody listening? You want to get away from him. Come this way. <laughs> and, you say, and he'll say, what have I done? Nothing. I watch some of you in here. I, I know what's going on, but I still love you. And only God can change people's hearts. But listen, fear of further hurts. Bitterness builds walls of isolation. Remember, we were talking about Satan tries to divide. People leave the church many times. Because somebody said something or they're doing something they think is better than they're doing and they're jealous. All kind of different reasons. But the object of the enemy is to isolate you from the body of Christ. Just like he calls he called Israel the split. Southern kingdom, northern kingdom. To keep you from the body of Christ. Because we need one another. I need areas of my life to be exposed. But as Willie says in our class. But you got to bear with the brethren. You that are strong in the faith. Love them while they're hurting. Let them know you know they are hurting. But you love them anyway. Build that relationship of love. Love is the more excellent way to get healing. We can pray one for another. The Bible says that. That you might be healed. But love is very powerful. Love can heal. Listen to this. Fear of getting hurt more. Fear of distrusting of people. Now you distrust them. Fear of inner hurts and weakness being exposed. I don't like my weakness to be exposed. You don't like your weakness to be exposed. So you'll keep me out. I'm reaching out to try to get you healed. No, I don't want nobody to, to think that I'm scared of cockroaches. We're scared to be exposed. So therefore, that's a trick of the enemy to keep us in our bondage. Some of you have sat back there with Susan and me in that back office. And you exposed your weakness, which we already discerned. And we loved you and helped you anyway. And said, so there's a place for you here to shield We'll just, we'll just love you. We see your weaknesses, but we're going to love you. Because I got news for you. Love never fails. Yeah, but if they don't meet my standard, I ain't going to have nothing to do with them. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Folks, that's not the spirit of Christ. While we were yet sinners... Christ died for you and me. I remember I was listening to a cassette tape by um, one of the ministers years ago, Derek Prince. This woman came up and he discerned that she needed to forgive her husband. And she said, well, that man ruined my life for 15 years and I'll never forgive him. And uh, dear Prince, well, if you don't, he's going to ruin the next 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's one choice. 
forgive and forget. I love my Father in heaven. Every sin that you've ever committed and every sin I've ever committed, he has forgiven us and, for, and took it as far as the east is from the west and he don't remember them anymore. <laughs> now, I've got to project this and the time is running out. And I just started on this thing, but I think you get, you got enough to hold up for the day anyway. The enemy don't want you to forgive because... That's the power. Unforgiveness is the power, is the principle, well, we know, the principle of Satan to hold you in bondage. And he'll go over there and bother somebody else because you, 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 you're being bound by your own unforgiveness. And we're saying, devil, leave me. He's not even around. It's your own unforgiveness that will bind us in that situation. And we wonder why our prayers are not being answered. I go to church twice on Sunday, three times in the week. Pay my tithes once a year. <laughs> Don't make no difference. God looks at the heart. And that's where he's got to start. And so many times we close him out. But you see, God is a loving God. He'll never, he's not going to condemn you. He just wants you to give it up. And start thinking about good things. What do you think about all week? Somebody that's done you wrong? Is that what you, see the devil, let me, listen to me now. The devil will take that and just cause it to go over and over in your mind. Over and over what they did. Day in and day out. Week in and week out. Month in month out. Year in year out. The devil's keep, and you, and you just feel miserable. You have no peace. You have no happiness. You just feel miserable. But your pride is holding you and you won't admit it. Preach it, Bob. I believe it will. Because I love you. I remember one time, I, and I'm going to close on this. You know how they used to catch mon uh, monkeys? They would cut a hole in the top of the uh, coconut and clean out the inside. And they put candy in there. And, and they'd tie the coconut to a tree with a long rope or something. And the monkey would come along and he'd put his hand in that coconut and grabbed that big ball of candy and his, and, his, and his fist is swollen up and he's caught. He can't get loose. He's holding on to that candy. But did you know how he can get loose? Somebody tell me. Just turn it loose and his hand will slide right out. Turn it loose, church. It ain't worth it. It's not worth it. Turn it loose. And don't play like you don't hear me. I know you hear me. Am I talking loud enough? And watch your life change. And if the devil brings it back in your mind, you say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will not think evil of my brother or my sisters. I will not do that. I am a child of the living God. I belong to God. And I command you to loosen my mind now in the name of Jesus. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And you and me bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Now I know you've heard the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. It's not about condemnation. Turn it loose. And we'll be set free. In fact, everybody say, Lord, Lord I, forgive. I forgive my father, my, father, my, mother, my mother, my sister, my, sister, my, brother, my brother, every believer. Every believer. I, forgive I forgive myself. I turn every offense every loose, loose in the name of Jesus. I'm free in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Now, Father, for us that can go back in the back and eat, we go and thank